Over the years, I've worked with many survivors of narcissistic abuse, and I have also worked with alcoholics, addicts, codependents, people pleasers, and uh, I've often seen that there's a relationship between alcoholism and narcissism. So in today's video, I'm going to examine this and tell you uh, more from my own professional experience, but also my personal experience of having been a part of a 12-step program and trying to figure out, am I an alcoholic? Am I a narcissist? I mean, these are questions that a lot of victims of narcissistic abuse will tend to ask ourselves um, and that will tend to try to examine them. So sit tight and uh, let's talk a little bit about narcissistic abuse and alcoholism and how those two things are interconnected. I'm Dr. Meg Hayworth and I'm a transpersonal psychologist and holistic nutritional chef and I help women survivors of parental narcissistic abuse to heal holistically, releasing the trapped emotional energy that gets trapped in our bodies, which is our subconscious mind, by the way. Um, and I also help them with food, diet to help support the body to heal itself while you're going through your emotional release and core negative belief release process. So um, like I said, we're going to talk about alcoholism and narcissism. And I see this a lot in my practice where uh, somebody will talk to me about the narcissist in their life and that person is also an alcoholic heavy like heavy heavy drinking we're talking like uh I was recently working with a woman whose daughter was drinking four four bottles of wine a day so this is like a huge issue and the thing that got her to understand that her daughter was even a narcissist is the fact that they did an intervention and that just triggered her into narcissistic injury which led her into the narcissistic, basically, you know, the implosion that happens once they're injured so dramatically. But yes, I have seen there is a relationship between narcissism and alcoholism. And what I find is that even if you're not a narcissist or an alcoholic, if you grew up in a narcissistic family system, and I know personally, um, uh, there was not alcohol in our house. There was some, but I mean, it was like, you know, my parents maybe drank f five drinks a year, you know, so it was alcohol was actually a really bad thing. It was like something you're not supposed to do excessively. So to me, any amount of alcohol seemed like a lot. <laughs> so, um, but uh, the addiction that was going on really was sugar um, with my narcissistic parent. And so, it can be any kind of addiction, but I see this a lot with narcissists. So, and my thought behind this is that narcissists tend to have had significant trauma. They are doing everything they can to avoid shame and guilt. It's a shame driven disorder. So they don't want to feel their shame. They don't want to feel their guilt. So they project it around onto everybody close to them and then try to keep it hush hush so that nobody sees. Uh, how destructive and abusive and cruel that they can be, um, that that's only for the people close in behind closed doors to witness. Um, so addiction, I think, is common because the narcissist is trying to quell those emotions, trying to quell all of like, I can't even imagine like what goes on in the head of a narcissist, all of the awful things that they say to themselves about themselves, that they say to themselves about other people, the way that they're constantly tearing other people down. Um, it's just the manipulations that are constant, the lack of conscience, all of that, and the avoidance of, of, of the shame you know, of feeling any emotion or working through anything or trying to get better in any way, shape or form. So because that's something that's going on with them, why wouldn't they want to quell that with something? Why wouldn't they want to, um, to use alcohol or drugs or sex or, um, uh, serial relationships, all of that, because they don't want to feel it. And this is why most people you know, go towards addiction in my uh, professional opinion. And in my personal opinion, um, I think that they often go there is because they're self-medicating, they're self-numbing. 
um, because there's just so much pain in there and they don't know what to do with it. So I think that's, you know, one of the relationships uh, is it's about emotional pain and wanting to cover that. And now, ACONs, adult children of narcissists, uh, who are empaths and sensitives, which are people that I, I work with, they tend to be um, the scapegoat of the family or the lost child. I was the lost child, the one who gets lost in the shuffle and and gets becomes invisible or makes themselves invisible. I can tell you I definitely made myself invisible. Or they become the enabler. So we are the ones who tend to become major people pleasers. And it doesn't mean the golden child doesn't become a people pleaser too. They may be more towards perfectionist. Um, and they tend to be more likely to also develop narcissism. So, um, but for those of us who are introspective and thoughtful and empathetic and have, you know, empathy in spades, have lots of it um, to help ourselves and to help other people with, uh, we tend to become people pleasers. And a people pleaser is like a big red flag for the possibility of becoming an addict or more importantly, or more likely to become a codependent. And that's my own personal story as I became a codependent to a number of addicts. And because I'm also a people pleaser, I was also drinking a lot. And I would drink to cover up my own uh, emotional response because I would just be, I'd be around these narcissistic men that I was dating and liars and cheaters and narcissistic friends um, and family members. And I, it, it's, it's painful. It's painful to be in the middle of, and I didn't have the skills and I didn't have the understanding. So I would, you know, just be like, I just want to numb this because I can't, I can't hold this for everybody. When you're an empath and sensitive, a lot of us do use alcohol, drugs, sex, shopping, um, whatever it is to try to numb ourselves and distract ourselves from everything that's going on around us. We don't know what to do with all this energy. We just find ourselves sponging it in. And so it's just overwhelming. And so we may end up drinking as well. And so personally, I uh, just wanted to share a little bit of my own alcoholic story. Um, I'm not an alcoholic. I did at one point think that maybe I was. I was drinking with alcoholics, with addicts, with narcissists. And um, I started that later in life. And um, I'm also a big people pleaser. So I was always trying to make them happy and a major codependent. Um, that's something that I was always getting in codependent relationships, serial monogamy, one relationship after the next for many years until I got into AA. And I went to AA because I, I felt like I was drinking way too much, way too much for me. And I felt like I'd gotten to a point where I couldn't stop. And, um, but I wasn't doing what alcoholics, what alcoholics traditionally do. I was not waking up in the morning and drinking all, all day long. I was not drinking bottles and bottles a day. Um, I had a lot of shame around alcoholics in my family and around drinking too much in my family. So like having two drinks or three drinks was considered an alcoholic in my family. And so I had a lot of shame that I had to work through around that. So after I decided to commit to being in AA, and I learned a lot about alcoholism and narcissism, and I learned a lot about the disease of alcoholism. And one of the major things that they talk about in the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous is the, um, the selfishness that is involved with being an alcoholic. And that's for people that are actively in their addiction. I've I met people in the rooms that when they got out of their addiction and they became sober, which is a process, it's not just that you suddenly stop drinking and you're better. It's a whole process and going through the 12 steps. I highly recommend it. I'm so glad that I did it. I learned so much about myself and I learned that I'm really an Al-Anon and I'd been an Al-Anon before already. You know, I just think 12-step programs are really great. So I committed to a year and what happened was in that year, um, one of the things that you commit to is you don't date. So I stopped dating and um, I have had a whole different relationship with men and dating and all of that ever since, which has been really great. It's helped me reform that for myself. Um, and then, but I also learned from listening to hundreds, literally hundreds and hundreds of stories of 
alcoholics, that there's a huge difference between an alcoholic who's actively in their addiction and is acting in very narcissistic ways because they're deep in their addiction and that's all they can see. That's all they can focus on. All they're looking for is their next drink or their next high, their next thing to try to quell all of those emotions and the, the betrayal experiences and the pain and all the things that they have been trying to cover up. And so they're looking for that next thing. And so, yes, you look at an alcoholic, if you know an alcoholic or you lived with one, you'll be like, they are some of the most selfish people on earth because you'll feel like, hey, they completely ignore me for the substance. Um, they may steal from you to get um, money to pay for the substance that they're trying to numb themselves with. So yeah, so when you're in the middle of the addiction, you are highly narcissistic. Are you a narcissist? Not necessarily. But I have seen and, you know, had a real strong sense that people that I did meet in the rooms, some of them were, I think, both alcoholics and narcissists. So, but again, there's a fine line between those, those, those two things. So, um, because, I mean, I've also known narcissists who drank very heavily to, um, again, I think they were trying to quell the feeling of uh, the shame and the guilt. They don't want to feel it, so they're just throwing it on everyone else. So, um, and also I think there might also be a, a connection with, because, you know, they often don't have any conscience about the things that they do, so... Um, and it's the grandiosity of it, like the grandiose narcissist may be like, you know, drinking and partying and that that lifestyle that's very external. It, that's something that they're really into. That's something that they really want to, um, they want to live that kind of life. Um, they're not going to be living a more internal kind of life where they're looking at themselves. So I think that those are some important things to really look at in yourself. I've had just about every single client of mine who has gone into narcissistic recovery and we've worked together on this, um, they have always questioned, oh my gosh, am I a narcissist? And this is so common as well. Um, and if they had a drinking problem or if they had a codependency problem or a people pleasing problem, you know, they ask themselves, am I a narcissist? Am I an alcoholic? I have done that. I mean, I examine that and good examine those things. I think it's very, very important. If you think you're drinking too heavily, go examine it, go to AA, commit to it. Um, I ended up doing almost two years. And um, it's because after the year, I said to myself, well, I gave myself permission to drink. If you want to drink, you can have one. But I didn't want one for like six months, you know, and then when I did, my whole relationship to alcohol was reset. And now I have a, a really different relationship with it. Um, and but I also am no longer hanging out with those people that were alcoholics and narcissists or narcissistic um, that were in the middle of their addiction. And I, you know, those are red flags. If I see people like that, I'm just not going to form friendships with them. I'm not going to hang out with them. I'm not going to go to bars all the time and do what I did before. I really like released all these boundaries I had for myself around it. And that's something I want you to really think about for yourself is really look at, um, you know, what's your relationship to alcohol? What's your relationship to people pleasing, codependency? Because I mean, that there's an addiction to that too. Um, look at that. Um, what's your relationship to um, other things that you might be using? Um, you might be numbing out on television, <laughs> you know, binge watching series. You might be um, uh, shopping online all the time. Um, you know, you might be, you know, scrolling online online all the time, just trying to avoid, if you are trying to avoid looking at yourself, um, your own personal growth, if you're trying to avoid growth and development, um, that's, you know, something to really look at. And that's, that's part of that question of, you know, am I also a narcissist? Um, that's part of answering that question is um, really looking at, you know, what are the ways that uh, it you may be narcissistic. What are the manipulative tools that you may, you might have recycled that you learned from the narcissistic parent? Um, and really looking at yourself honestly, if you can do that, you're not a narcissist because narcissists can't do that. Um, 
they may be able to see some of the stuff that gets pointed out to them, but uh, it's 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 a real slippery um, slope. So yeah, so, so like I said, there is a major connection between narcissism and alcoholism. Um, there is the selfish, selfishness that is found in both uh, the disease of alcoholism and, of course, the narcissism. That's all, what it's all about, basically. And those two things can definitely overlap. You can definitely have a narcissist who is an alcoholic. But again, the big, big red flags are, you know, is this person uh, introspective? Can they look at themselves? Can they make, change their behaviors? Um, can they change their internal world so that they're not running on jealousy and envy and um, a lack of empathy? Can they do those things? I mean, that's an ind indicator that you're not a narcissist. You might be an empath who's really protected your heart. Um, you know, that's a possibility as well. So, and then also, you know, with alcoholism, um, get help if you think you have a problem because it also could be that um, the alcohol is, you're physically addicted to it. Um, I, I saw some lectures from Dr. Lance Dotis, who's a uh, expert from Harvard on alcoholism. And one of the things he said was like, if you're drinking every day, I mean, he said anybody can become addicted to alcohol physically, um, drinking every single day. Um, so, so stop it. <laughs> you know, um, if you can't, you might need help because you're physically addicted and you need to go through a sobriety process. And AA is a really, really wonderful place to go do that for yourself and to figure it out, parse it out, figure it out. Is, is this what my, my problem is? Okay. So if you have any questions, if you have anything that you would add to this video, please put it in the comments below. Um, if this video has helped you, let me know if there's something else you want me to expand upon. And I started talking about, cause I tend to just make some notes and ramble <laughs> on my videos <laughs> and just kind of share like, ah, this is the experience I have. So, um, I often will go back and see my videos and go, Oh, I left that out and I left that out. So anyway, let me know if you haven't already done so. Please like this video. Please, please, please. This helps get it up in the algorithms and helps more people that really need this information to be able to see it. Um, and also please subscribe to my channel so that you get notifications of future. And also check out my website, meghayworth.com and uh, look at my uh, free checklist, 52 ways to tell if your parent is a narcissist really if anybody is, uh, in 52 ways, <laughs> honestly, it was the easiest list I ever made, which is so, so scary, but check it out and see if you resonate and, um, that gets you on my email list so that my upcoming courses, I'm so excited. I'm going to be really doing, um, work with recovery, narcissistic abuse recovery through the energy system through energy dynamics through claiming your energy back that you've given away in all of the emotions that you've held the, the thoughts the feelings the beliefs the guilt the shame the pain the uh the questioning of am i a narcissist you know because they they make you doubt yourself so why wouldn't you question that they make you think that you're the problem that they're perfect and you're the problem and it's that's not the truth so, uh, especially if you're really resonating with everything that I'm saying in this video. So anyway, I hope this, that, that this has really helped you. I thank you so much for watching this video on Dr. Meg Hayworth, and I hope that this information will help you get well now.